Hello, my name is Graham Barr, Club Business Officer at Scottish Golf, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Liam Allen, Marketing Convener at Kirkcaldy Golf Club. In this video, we're going to discuss hosting a virtual AGM using Zoom. Over the last year, much of what businesses do has gone virtual. That has been no different for golf clubs, and in particular, a common challenge that has been faced across the country is how to host an AGM at a time where large-scale in-person meetings are not permitted. Many clubs have gone down the route of hosting their AGM via Zoom webinar, including Kirkcaldy, where Liam was heavily involved in the process. So Liam, can you tell us a bit about how your committee decided to progress with hosting an AGM via Zoom webinar? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously we we knew obviously with COVID that, you know, we weren't going to be able to host a, a regular AGM having you know, a hundred odd members in the clubhouse would just be, uh, would, would just be crazy. Um, so, I mean, we, we'd obviously been using Zoom um, throughout the year to do our normal monthly uh, management committee meetings. And to be honest, like, we, you know, we, we discussed how are we going to do the AGM and initially I just says, look, well, let's just do it on Zoom um, as, as we normally would. Uh, we've done members evenings before on Zoom where we have uh, all the members on, cameras on, and, you know, we can interact with them. But when we actually looked at the sort of the nitty gritty of how to run an AGM successfully, we thought that, that this isn't going to be, this isn't going to work. Uh, just doing it on Zoom where, you know, it's it would just be a rabble um, of everyone with their mics on. And um, we, we needed to find a way to to make it smooth um, and, and, you know, keep things going on the night. So obviously that's when... Um, yourself reached out um, and sort of gave us uh, some advice on that um, which was hugely you know beneficial to us because there was a lot of things in there that we just hadn't thought about at all. Yep and then once once the committee had kind of agreed that you would pursue it via Zoom what were the steps that you went through and then how did you communicate that with members? Yeah, well, obviously, working from the, the document you sent, um, the, the first thing was to get our heads around the, the differences in Zoom. So obviously, we, we were used to doing Zoom meetings, whereas um, you guys recommended to do a Zoom webinar. Um, so obviously, it gives us more functionality in terms of uh, controlling what attendees can do. Um, but with that comes along the challenges of trying to communicate that to the members and, and explain you know, this, you know, it's going to work slightly different to a regular Zoom meeting. Um, one of those differences is that um, we had to make sure that the people on the call had uh, voting rights, because um, obviously for our AGM, you need to have uh, voting rights and there's certain categories of, of memberships that don't have that. So obviously there's like, there was like a cross-checking exercise that had to go on. And the only way we could do that was to get people to sign up through Eventbrite. Um, I, I'm sure you could do it another way as well, but that for us, that, that was the easiest way to get people to register. Um, and then obviously through Eventbrite, we could also give them more detail as to how, you know, how you're going to join the call, what's going to happen next. You know, obviously we had to do our checks against our membership, um, you know, database and, and make sure that the people signed up were, were the correct people that we wanted and, um, make sure, you know, there was no sort of imposters coming through there and, and, uh, damaging the votes. <laughs> Yep, and then obviously once you'd gone through that process, going to the AGM itself, how did it go? It, you know what, it, it surprised us, um, to be honest. Well, one of our main concerns was um, that the, the way we were running the webinar was that um, there'd be very limited interaction from attendees to, to the committee. So on the nights we had, um, the, the committee were, were obviously on the call and you could see all of us with our cameras on. But because we were able to set up the webinar that people couldn't turn on their cameras or their microphones, we were we were a bit worried because you know the, the AGM for us is, is it's always a good night to, to speak to the members and they can ask us questions. And um, so we obviously had to go down the route of pre-submitted uh, questions. And to be honest, most of you know there, there, there wasn't really any complaints from the membership that um, they didn't have that sort of um, question and answer in person or, or, you know, being able to turn on their camera and, and ask a question. So in, in that sense, you know, we, initially we were worried, but it, it actually went, went really well. Good. And you kind of touched on it a wee bit there, but did you get much feedback after the AGM from the members? Uh, to be honest, not, 
not massive feedback. Um, I guess the the consensus on the night was that it was it was pretty quick, um, a lot quicker than uh, one in person where you've got you know a lot of stop start and you know we, as as a committee we were able to um, go through everything we wanted to go through and uh, yeah you know we we, we stuck to a time um, whereas in person you know it, it normally overruns and. Uh, you have some, you know, complications complications along the way, but uh, yeah, that you know that that was really the the only feedback was, you know, let, let's do it again <laughs> on on Zoom. Yep, and then I kind of following on from that, moving forward, even in a post COVID world, would you, as a club, look to utilise technology for maybe an AGM or similar member events in future? Uh, definitely, definitely, um, you know, something we're continuing as as member um, sort of member nights and um, that members can join but in terms of AGMs I mean most golf clubs have their AGM and you know deepest darkest winter um, and you know you have to open up the clubhouse yes you know you, you might be able to get the bar open and and you know sell a few drinks but you know in terms of everyone coming out of their houses on you know a cold winter's night is it nicer to sit in you know your living room and, and do it from the comfort of your home probably um, I think certainly certain, certainly for the next one you know we'd be looking at doing this again um because COVID is probably gonna still be around um uh, next year um certainly in, in the early part of the year so you know it, it keeps the members safe it keeps us safe um yeah I, I I think certainly there there is potential to use this in the future as well. Yep. Well thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today Liam. Um I'm sure a lot of clubs will find the, the kind of insight you've given into hosting an AGM virtually uh, really valuable. For any clubs looking for support on how to do this, um, you can access the resources that Liam's mentioned today on the club governance page of the Scottish Golf website.